Hello grade 10s. Have you ever wondered what a trigonometric function is? Well, you've come to the right place for an answer. In this lesson, we will look at what a trigonometric ratio is and find out how to obtain a unit circle to help us calculate a table of values for sine. To understand what a trigonometric function is, we need some prior knowledge. Let's join Keke who will take us through this journey. Do you remember what trigonometry is all about? Trigonometry is a study of relationships between the sides and the angles of a triangle. Let's look at an example of what I mean. So far, we've only worked with right angle triangles, so we're going to use right angle triangles in this example as well. Look at these two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle WXY. They're both right angled, and they both have an angle of 30 degrees. The ratio of BC to AC in triangle ABC comes to 0, 0,5, which is the same value as the ratio of XY divided by WY in triangle WXY. This ratio works out to the same constant number in any right angle triangle that has one angle of 30 degrees. So if we keep this angle at 30 degrees and this angle at 90 degrees, we can change the lengths of the sides, but the ratios of the sides will still have the same constant value. If we test this idea with any other angle in a right angle triangle, we will find the same thing. The ratio of the sides remains constant for any size of the angle. Mathematicians have called this constant value sine of the angle. Using theta to represent any angle, we can define sine theta as the ratio of the side opposite the known angle divided by the hypotenuse. If we calculate AB divided by AC in triangle ABC, we find another constant number. So we give this ratio the name cosine theta or cos theta for short. We define cos theta as the side adjacent to the known angle divided by the hypotenuse. The third ratio we deal with is tangent theta, or tan theta for short. This is the constant ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. In triangle ABC, that will be BC divided by AB. As we've seen, the trig ratios are always worked out with reference to a particular angle. So, in triangle ABC, I can't ask you what sine of that triangle is, but I can ask you what sine of angle A or sine of angle C is. The angle that is being referred to is called the reference angle. So, sine, cos, and tan written on their own are meaningless, but sine A, cosine A, and tan A refer to particular ratios of sides of a right angle triangle with the reference angle of A. The trigonometry we've looked at so far is useful for calculating the values of the sides and the angles of a right angle triangle. If we place the triangle onto the Cartesian plane, this allows us to extend the uses of the trigonometric ratios to any angle measured from the positive x-axis and the resulting line segment. Let me show you. We'll place a triangle with the reference angle A at the origin like this. Let's label the coordinates of point C as X and Y. Then the distance from A to B on the triangle is just X. This is the side next to or adjacent to the reference angle. The distance from B to C will be Y units. And this is the side opposite the reference angle. We have moved Y units up from the axis to get to C. What label can we use for the hypotenuse? Well, this hypotenuse can also be seen as the radius of a circle with its center at the origin. So we'll use an R for radius to represent the hypotenuse. So in this triangle, sine theta is y divided by r. 
cos theta is x divided by r and tan theta is y divided by x. You've seen this before. Now, let me show you something. If we take away line AB and line BC, we are left with a line segment that goes from the origin to point C. This line has been placed at an angle of 30 degrees measured from the positive x-axis. What's more, because this line segment is a radius from a circle centered at the origin, we could move it to create a different angle with the x-axis. Watch what happens when we turn the radius, keeping the origin as the center, to make a bigger angle with a positive x-axis. Let's stop turning the line segment here, where theta equals 60 degrees. Can you work out the value of sine 60 degrees? The length of the radius r hasn't changed. It has a measurement of 5 units. We can draw in a line perpendicular to the x-axis, like this. That gives us a new right angle triangle. This perpendicular distance is the same as the y-coordinate of our point C. So that's 4,33. So now sine 60 degrees is 4,33 divided by 5. Working that out on a calculator, you get sine 60 degrees is 0, 0,866. Now let's see what happens if we make the angle between the radius and the positive x-axis bigger. If I move the radius to here, I can draw in a right angle triangle. Do you see that the distance x is shorter now and the distance y is longer? But the line segment, the r value, hasn't changed. Once again, we find sine of this angle and we will get 0, 0,985. So, we can rotate the line segment R about the origin. As the line moves, the angle here between the x-axis and the line keeps changing. For each position of the line segment, we can find sine of the angle. If we wanted to, we could also find cosine of the angle or tan of the angle. In this lesson, we will stay with the sine ratio. As the angle theta changes, the value of sine theta changes. The value of sine theta at any position depends on the size of the angle theta. This means that there is a functional relationship between theta and sine theta. This relationship between two variables is a function. To find out how this function behaves, we need to use theta as an independent variable and sine theta as the dependent variable. So far, we've been using a line segment of five units. But if we choose to change r from five units to four units or one unit, all the angles created by the line segment stay the same. The length of the line segment doesn't change the size of the angle. So, the length of the line segment won't change the value of any of the trig ratios for this angle either. For example, sine of 60 degrees for a line segment of one unit is 0, 0,866 divided by 1. That's the same as sine of 60 degrees for a line segment of 5 units. This means we can choose to use one unit for the radius of a circle with its center at the origin. The circle created by using a radius of one unit is called a unit circle. Knowing that the length of r will not affect the ratio, we can choose to work in a unit circle with a radius of 1 because this makes working with sine theta easier. Sine theta is y divided by r and r is 1. So we are left with sine theta equals y. These sine values are the same as the ones stored in your calculator. This is very interesting. In the unit circle, sine theta's value at any point is the same as the y-coordinate for that point. We could say that in another way. Sine theta is the same as the height of any point above the x-axis. 
Now we are ready to compare the changes in theta and sine theta at different positions around the unit circle. It will be helpful to set up a table. We need two headings for the table, theta and sine theta. Let's start with the size of the angle theta. What are the possible sizes of the angle? The angle moves from being 0 degrees on the positive x-axis here through all the angles until it has moved 360 degrees back onto the positive x-axis. I'm going to choose 0, 30, 90, 150 and 180 degrees and see what the value of sine theta is for each. Here goes. When theta is 0 degrees, the line lies on the x-axis. Sine of theta will be 0. You could also see this as a height of 0 above the x-axis. Then we rotate the line segment so that theta is 30 degrees. We can read off sine theta here. It's exactly 0, 0,5. That makes sense. That's the same answer that we found in our right angle triangle earlier on. You can also check this on your calculator. If you press the keys for sine and then 30 degrees, you will get 0, 0,5. This is also the height of the end point of the line segment above the x-axis. As we carry on rotating the line in the unit circle, do you see that as the angle increases, the sine theta value, or the height of the point, is also increasing? Now, the angle has moved through to 90 degrees. What answer do you expect to get for sine of 90 degrees? You get 1. Again, this makes sense. We are on the y-axis, and the radius of the circle is 1. The height of the line is also 1. If you check this on your calculator, sine 90 is 1. As the line segment rotates between here and 180 degrees, theta continues getting larger, but sine theta and the height decrease. Let's stop at 150 degrees. The y value here is 0, 0,5. Then, if we go to 180 degrees, the y value is 0 again. To see what happens in the second half of the graph, we need to extend our table of values. Let's put theta equal to 210 degrees, then 270 degrees, then 330 degrees, and 360 degrees. Before finding these exact points, Look at what happens to sine theta as theta increases. Between 180 and 270 degrees, the sine theta value goes from 0 down to negative 1. The height of the point measured from the x-axis goes from 0 to 1, but below the x-axis now. At 210 degrees, sine theta has decreased to negative a half or negative 0, 0,5. Now, if we rotate the line to 270 degrees, the sine theta is negative 1. The negative sign on these values tells us that the points are below the x-axis. And now, for the last quarter of the line segment's rotation around the origin. As the line segment rotates from 270 degrees, through to 360 degrees, sine theta increases from negative 1 up to 0. At theta equal to 330 degrees, sine theta has increased to negative 0, 0,5. And at 360 degrees, sine theta is 0. Now, let's have a look at the table of values on its own. Can you identify some characteristics of the function we have set up between theta and sine theta? Did you notice that sine theta is never larger than 1 and that it never goes below negative 1? That makes sense because the height of the line segment in the unit circle always has a value between 0 and 1. A value larger than 1 wouldn't lie on the circle. So, the function for sine theta has a maximum value of 1 
and a minimum value of negative 1. We say that it has a range from negative 1 to 1. The domain that we have chosen to work with was for theta from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Well, that will certainly help you get a grip. Remember to use the trigonometric functions task video to try a variety of questions dealing with functions. Explore this topic further on our website. In no time, you'll be getting trigger with it. Goodbye.